you know, you are an instructor of data science and machine learning courses, as has come up already in this episode through LinkedIn Learning, as well as through the University of California, Irvine. And so from your vantage point there, um, we've talked a lot already in this episode about what's missing <laughs> from companies in order to have success with AI. Um, but what do you think is missing from data science education, both formal and informal, to help aspiring practitioners prepare for industry? Well, again, I'm apologizing for being um, old school, I guess, <laughs> almost almost 30 years doing this, depending on when you start, uh, start counting. I, I guess I uh, shouldn't apologize for that, right? But, you know, it, it's a... Uh, uh, it's, People were always influenced by how they learned, but also I can take the long view, right? So here it is. Here's the number one thing that's missing is that crisp DM or something like it, really understanding not just the machine learning life cycle, like, you know, people put a little diagram on a slide and you start with problem definition, then you do data prep. I, I don't mean lip service to it. I mean, really understanding the machine learning life cycle and the implications for project management and working with clients. In other words, points in the process where the client should be making the decision and not me. You know, so as much as I think that um, Kaggle has been a positive influence for our community, and I really do think that that's true. It has distorted our view of what a machine learning project is because it's a modeling competition. It's not a machine learning project competition. It's a modeling competition. So I think that we have, I mean, again, I'm going to make myself sound like the old, old guy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think we have a whole generation of data scientists that um, are, well, now I, I think I'm oversimplifying because it was true when I started out too, but we've always had an obsession with modeling and modeling algorithms and haven't understood enough how you get a project from beginning to end, including the, the cultural and organizational stuff that comes with that. And I don't know why no time is spent on that. You know, in something like a machine learning boot camp, where the primary reason somebody's there is to really sharpen their skills, usually with a specific set of tools like Python libraries and so on, right? I kind of get it why they don't get it fitted in there. But how data science master's programs, for instance, don't spend enough time on this, they have no excuse. It's crazy. I mean, they should have entire courses dedicated to it. Not half dozen of them, but for goodness sakes, at least one. Right. You know? I think you're absolutely right. And I haven't thought the thought that you just conveyed uh, so clearly, but you're absolutely right. And it kind of reminds me of a, a thought that I have had clearly. It reminds me of how it it's surprising to me how much of elementary and so primary school and secondary school education is focused on abstract uh, skills like calculus and chemistry that the vast majority of the people that take those courses and memorize everything about them and really know how to do partial di differential calculus and understand how, what compounds need to be combined together in chemistry to create this other compound. And more than 90%, maybe more than 99% of people who do those courses never use those skills in their work or in their life. <laughs> and it's, I don't know, like I've, I've heard of, you know, I've seen on TV shows that there are things like home economics courses or whatever, but it, I, I don't know. We never growing up in Ontario, uh, in Canada, we didn't have anything. There was nothing like that. There was, so it, it, you can kind of see the analogy here. It's interesting how there are topics that I guess in curriculum developers think, wow, this is a really fascinating thing. And it really, it's something about the universe that is extraordinary. So this could be data science models like, you know, 
that this the chat GPT works. Wow, that's crazy. You know, how does it work? Or that organic chemistry works. How does that work? Partial derivative calculus. Wow. But it's rarely practical <laughs> information that somebody needs to know. And now some small portion of those people that do those courses, yes, they they go on to study it in university, they do a PhD in it, they they become an expert in it. Uh, and you don't have to get a PhD to be an expert. You can also develop it in the field. Um, but it, it's just interesting to me. It seems unbalanced. And uh, yeah. Well, and, and you mentioned, you know, I've seen a lot of these lists of the 10 skills you need to become a data scientist or whatever. So let's just take one thing that often comes up. Um, I went to an engineering school, so I took quite a bit of calculus, you know, up through differential equations and, you know, and everything. And it wasn't really my jam, but I survived it, you know. Linear algebra, for whatever reason, was a mental block. Maybe I didn't like the professor. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But that's always on a list of things you absolutely positively need, you know, to do data science. And that's not. That's not in my bag of tricks. But why does this even come up in conversation? Well, because if you're going to work for uh, one of the one of the fang companies, then you're doing you're doing machine learning at such an unbelievable scale. I mean, right. take Netflix for instance. I mean, is it billions of transactions? Like, how many how many seconds right. or minutes do you have to wait? I mean. It's just an unbelievable scale. I mean, what something like a fifth of the world's population probably is on Netflix. And I think it really is something like that, right? Hundreds of millions, certainly. Um, LinkedIn is almost a billion, isn't it? Seven or 800 million, something like that. Unbelievable scale. So if you're working for companies like this, you're not using off-the-shelf software. You have to write these algorithms from scratch. But why on earth is that our model for what a data science team should look like at a regional bank that's trying to prevent loan defaults or an insurance company that's trying to prevent fraud or a small health group that has a dozen hospitals. It's insane to me. It just doesn't make any sense. Now, I'm, I'm not saying across the board that you shouldn't solve those problems you know, with code or that knowing really knowing the behind the scenes. But for me, knowing the history of the algorithms and how they work is sufficient to manipulate the hyperparameters and so on, right? I don't necessarily have to write the algorithms from memory from scratch. I get why some people find that skill valuable, but I've been doing this for enough decades that I'm quite comfortable saying, I don't need to know that to do what I do. And I think I'm bringing plenty of value to these clients, right? So there just seems to be some real confusion about what you really need. So to send someone out with an extra helping of that kind of stuff, but leave them completely and utterly unprepared to scope a project and write a client contract doesn't make any sense to me. Because then the solopreneurs have to learn that on their own, which can be very painful. Or hopefully, if they're going to go the consulting route, then they do a round of consulting at uh, more on the business consulting side before they go more technical or something, right? I mean, somehow that has to be addressed, but I don't know why that's not addressed in a data science master's. Yeah, I think uh, Serge noted for me in his research that you have discussed previously something like a doctor's residency for data science. Oh, well, that's, um, that's actually a gentleman, Usama Fayyad, um, says that, and I borrow that from him. So he's, he's been in the business for decades. He was one of the co-chairs of the first KDD conference, and he is the uh, inaugural director, I think is his title, at Northeastern's program for experiential AI, and that's the metaphor he uses, and I think it's really powerful that, okay, you've got your medical degree, but you have to do residency before you go out into the field. But he says that because it's completely absent from everybody's program, except for the program that he chairs, right? <laughs> uh, and, and I agree with him that more people have to do that. 
So at Northeastern, they work with postdocs, they work with doctoral students, they work with the whole, the whole gamut, and they, um, uh, they could speak to the details better than I, but they work on real world, world projects together, almost like university environment and think tank and consultancy all rolled up into one. 